Hello everybody, AJ Ryzik here, and today we have another software review. Today we are looking at LibreOffice version 5.0. Now, this was released just a few days ago, although I grabbed one of the early release candidates so I could start testing and playing around with it, see what was new and all that kind of stuff. Gotta say, lots of changes this time around. Um, you know, it's one of those things every time a new version came comes out, I, I end up saying, you know, this is the best so far. Well, you know, it just keeps getting better and better. Um, you know, definitely uh, is, is a major competitor for uh, Microsoft Office now. You know, there was a time not, and you know, not too long ago where uh, Microsoft Office was really the only the only name out there when it came to uh, when it came to a, a complete office suite. Yeah, there were other things out there, but they weren't really serious contenders. Um, those days are pretty much over, and it's not uh, you know just to kind of give a shout out to some of the other suites. There's some other office suites out there now that you know besides LibreOffice that are really giving. Um, uh, Microsoft Office a run for the money so and and in the big picture things that's good for all the office suites because if there's competition you're going to have uh, more of a drive for more development uh, and you know it it you know it's going to push Microsoft to improve uh, to improve uh, Microsoft Office as well so uh, you know it's a good thing all around but anyway, I am on the LibreOffice website right now. You can go there, download a copy, and um, you'd want to, if you see where I clicked on downloads, you see where LibreOffice Fresh, that's going to get you the latest stable version. And so you could go there and download. Now, if you are on a Linux distribution, chances are the... Um, you're going to be able to download via PPA through your uh, through your you know official channels. If you are on a Ubuntu based distribution, uh, there is a PPA that you can add that will get you the latest version, and I'll I'll throw a link to that down in the video notes. Um, but if you're if you're on Mac, if you're on um, if you're on Windows, just come here. You can download whatever version you need. You see where. Uh, where it says main installer, it will, you know, automatically detect what kind of uh, what kind of operating system you're on. But you can go and click the change if there's something different you need. And as you can see, there's a variety of Linux distributions, Mac OS, Windows, um, and then you can also download some of the older versions as well. Um, and there's, uh, you know, while you're at the website, you know, if you if you I wouldn't just say if you like, you know, it, it's a great way, it's a great um, piece of software. So uh, if you got a few extra bucks, throw some uh, throw some coin uh, their way. They can always uh, put it to good use on development. Uh, but uh, you know, it, it talks a little bit about the uh, about the uh, LibreOffice Foundation here, uh, some community links, some some links to if you need a little help and that sort of thing. But anyway, let me get this out of the way. And we'll drag that over and out of the way, and we will start taking a look at this great Office Suite. So here we are, default start screen of LibreOffice, and over on the left-hand side, you see we've got uh, links to the various tools, the writer, spreadsheet, and so on. Uh, we could also open a file, go to our recent files, access our templates. This main screen right here it's got quick links to all of our most recent documents so you can just pick one you know say hey you know I was working on this recently I gotta go back to working on it click it boom go right to you know right back to working on it now this was actually some notes I typed up for uh, a recent operating system review I did but uh, I'll leave that open just so that I can demonstrate a few of the changes that we've had here uh, first thing that you notice is the new icon theme. It's called Breeze. Um, very, you know, uh, so compared to some of the old icon themes, this is so much of an improvement. You know, back in version 4.0, they introduced a theme called Cipher. Real nice icons there as well. Um, I think this one's even better. It's got a real nice modern flat look. 
um, really updates the look of LibreOffice. So, uh, you know, big thumbs up on that one. Um, another big change, and at first it doesn't seem like a big deal, has to do with the sidebar. Now, the sidebar was introduced, oh, it's been a while, I think maybe version 4.0. Uh, and it, it was ported over from code that uh, was donated from the Lotus Notes project. But uh, they've added, up here in styles, they've added this, uh, this style uh, preview right here. So like, say for example, I highlight the title here and you can see it's, it's set as a, styled as a title. I could go and make it, you know, a heading from here um, or, you know, whatever I wanted to do. I'm going to go back to t that to a title there. But and the reason why it's kind of significant is now uh, because of that one little change basically everything that what is in the formatting toolbar is now over here in the sidebar. So you could go and uh, get rid of this toolbar. Get rid of the formatting toolbar gives you a little more vertical space and um, while it may not seem like a big deal you know but, uh, the more vertical space that you, that you get and the more stuff you get over on the side I think at least in my opinion uh, it's more uh, I guess useful useful use of screen real estate for modern monitors you know most of your modern monitors are 16 to 10 ratio, 16 to 9, uh, somewhere in there. Uh, the old four thirds monitor, not. I mean, there, there are people. There's plenty of people that still use them, but for for the majority of monitors out there today, you are using the widescreen monitors, and uh, you know, going with the sidebar, giving yourself more vertical space to use. Um, you know, it just makes more sense. LibreOffice continues to improve the compatibility with Microsoft Word. Uh, one of the big places that we that we see a change in this version is regard to highlighting and shading. Both of those are um, are preserved when importing and exporting back and forth from uh, Microsoft Word. You can also go and let me go and open up if you go to options here and if you come down to oh let me find it oh here we are uh, under load and save Microsoft Office you can go and select options for um, uh, under character highlighting whether you want it to export as highlighting or shading um, and then you've got some other options here for uh, uh, for how things are converted back and forth so a lot of work being done on that um, you know, kind of at the same time, I've noticed that, uh, you know, just transferring files back and forth, there's less issues than there used to be. Um, you know, for a while, the when working with um, uh, items that, that it come over from um, Microsoft Word in DocX format, uh, for a long time, if it was just a text file, everything was great but once you once you started adding um, you know uh, tables charts images the the interpretation it kind of fell apart it's getting better it's still not perfect but it's still but it but it's much better than it used to be um, so uh, you know big uh, big improvement on that um, Another change is, and let me go, and I've got another document open here, uh, is in regard to images. And uh, that is that now you can go and crop, uh, I've got an, uh, you know this image right here, you can go now go and right click and go to a crop image and you know, just crop based on that. So uh, big improvement on that as well makes it you know a whole lot easier to to manipulate your images alright so here we are now in calc which is LibreOffice's spreadsheet program now uh, I'll start by saying I don't do a whole lot of work in in calc um, so I really didn't have any examples to pull up and and uh, and show y'all so 
kind of as a substitute, I pulled up the uh, release notes from LibreOffice so I can show some of the changes that have been made. Most, like I said, most everything here and within Calc has been made under the hood, um, so it's not something you can really see from the interface. But uh, just kind of going through the changes they've made here, we've got uh, under uh, our all of our charts showing data bars. There's a there's a host of changes here. You can now show a, a gradient, or you can do a solid for the bar itself. You can show the uh, underlying value or leave it blank. You can also set minimum and maximum for the uh, for the bar length. So we've got some improvements there. They've done some work on uh, scientific format, and number format. So you've got some more options there. And they've done some work on their formula engine um, for your bigger spreadsheets with more complex calculations and more total calculations. It's going to run faster for you. Um, the changes that I was showing about cropping in uh, in Writer that applies to Calc as well. Um, and you know the toolbar improvements you know you really at first glance you really don't notice it that much and and to be perfectly honest since I don't use calc that much I didn't realize they'd made some changes there they did tweak a little bit the order um, and and what's in the toolbars but you know you can go and and change the toolbars yourself so you know that's really not that big of a deal here we are in Impress, which is LibreOffice's response to PowerPoint. Now, I don't think that this application is quite where PowerPoint is, at least in regard to um, ease of use, but it is much improved compared to earlier versions. Now, one of the things they did in this uh, in this release is they got rid of a couple of the uh, toolbars, gave you some more vertical space, but at the same time, all those functions are now found within the tool or not toolbar but sidebar so you know it kind of gets that back to that thing I was talking about with utilizing the uh, the widescreen monitor making you know best use of the screen real estate that you have so you can you know click through all your various predetermined layouts um, and a whole host of other stuff you know your your transitions um, you know your various uh, uh, arrows, symbols, all that kind of thing. You've got your navigator down here at the bottom. You've got your um, styles and formatting. So, uh, like I said, you you haven't lost anything by getting rid of those toolbars. Granted, you could go and add them back if you like. Uh, you know, a lot of people like the toolbar kind of thing. Um, it just depends on how you work. And that's one of the things that I, I like with what LibreOffice is doing with the user interface. Um, you know they introduced the sidebar um, and uh, but you still have access to the toolbars and customizing the toolbars to just the way that you want it um, so it's kind of uh, you know whereas uh, whereas uh, Microsoft Office when they went to a ribbon there's a lot of people that did not like the ribbon um, and you were basically stuck. I mean, I think there's some third-party add-ons that uh, that will give you the old drop-down menu style back. Um, but you know, coming from Microsoft, your option was the the ribbon. Uh, whereas here, you've got options as far as how you want your interface to work. So uh, uh, I definitely like the direction that LibreOffice is going uh, as far as the user interface. Well, that just about finishes up this review. Uh, there's no possible way I could have gone over every single change they made in this release. There's just too many changes. So what I will do is leave a link down below to the uh, to the release notes. You can take a look at that, uh, and uh, you know there might be something that I didn't mention that may be of importance to you. I don't know, um, but anyway, the, you can go and take a look at that then on your own. Uh, as always. Thanks for watching. Um, if you are interested in Office Suites and looking, want to look at some of the, some of the others that are out there, I am going to be taking a look at WPS Office very soon. 
um, used to be known as Kingsoft Office. And, uh, you know, I haven't looked at it in uh, over a year or so, and they, uh, they've, they've made a couple of releases since then, so I want to take a fresh look at that. Um, it's another real nice Office suite. Also, I've been playing around with Caligra Office lately. I'm going to take a look at some of the applications within that suite as well, especially Caligula, yeah, Caligula? Um, Caligra Words, um, because they made some really big improvements there, and I think it might be really nice for um, uh, for some people that are looking for a writing application and maybe are a Kubuntu user or um, you know any of those KDE-based Linux distributions. Um, but anyway, uh, thanks for watching. If uh, you got any questions, comments, all that kind of stuff, leave it down below. As always, I'll try to get to it as soon as possible. Uh, if you are not a subscriber, please subscribe. And I hope to see you on the next video. Thanks a lot.